Take all the praise, take all the worship, take all the honor, dominion, majesty, power in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. Wake somebody somewhere. Get your family together. Tell them it's time for the glorious morning shower. Please make sure you don't miss out of what God is doing with us on this platform. It's a platform preparing us for our day. It's also a platform, oh God, also reminding us of our destiny, reminding us of our home in heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. In continuation of what God began with us yesterday, that says we should count the cost of our real home. God said, I should tell you this morning, he is not against riches and wealth. You will understand that God is not against riches and wealth because Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and that was when the disciples came to Jesus telling Jesus to teach them how to pray. They actually came to Jesus with their prayer point, their prayer list. Jesus, we need food. We need something to drink. We need clothes. They had those prayer points. And when Jesus looked at their prayer points, he began to strike them out. No? You don't need food. No? You don't need a uh, drink. You know, you don't need, and they were, they were angry. Exactly what Peter also did in the scripture we read yesterday, Luke chapter 18. Don't forget, Jesus confronted, Peter confronted Jesus there too. He said, you are saying all these things, Jesus. How about we, your disciples, that left our father? left our mothers. Are you not saying we don't have anything in the kingdom? Then Jesus now made him understand that in addition to what you have in the kingdom, even here on earth, you have a lot. That is to tell you that Jesus is not against precious. Now let's go back to what he did with the disciples when they told him to teach them how to pray. After he struck out all the prayer points, he now told them in verse 32, he said, all these things you people wrote here, all this, give us food, give us money, give us wife, give us any children, give any pregnancy, all these things. You see, my, I need money for school. All these things are the same things the Gentiles. Another scripture says, the idol worshippers, the heathens. You see, this is the same thing they look for. So what is the difference between you and them? You don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. And Jesus counseled them. Then he now said, But, that is in verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all these things shall be added. What? They became excited. Ooh. This is Jesus, we are a genius. We thought our prayer, our request was gone forever. He said they didn't go forever. I hid them, I hid them somewhere for you. That is exactly what God does to all his children. He wants you wealthy. He wants you rich. But that rich and wealth can never take the place of the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
then all these other things shall be added unto you. So that's to tell you that God is not against riches. If you compare those two scriptures together, Luke chapter 18 and Matthew chapter 6, take it 18, verse 18 to 30, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 32 downward to 33 or thereabout. Compare them together. You see that it's the same thing. Now let us see what it is in verse 30 of Luke. Then Peter said, from verse 28 now, then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said, and he said unto them, Verily I said unto you, There is no man that has left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. You see how mysterious that scripture is? So, if you are not sensitive, you say, oh, Pastor Ramon is against wealth, so it's against no, but all these things can never take the place of the kingdom of God. He emphasized here too about the kingdom. He said, No one who left brethren, wife, parents, houses for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of the kingdom so you ask yourself what have you left and you could look back and say i let go of this because of the kingdom i let go of this because of the kingdom so look into your life and you will see that either you are already going to have a place in the kingdom or you are not going to have anything in the kingdom. And I pray for you this morning that like many of us, you will have a place in the kingdom of God. So begin from today, begin to save towards purchasing your mansion. Begin to sow. Begin to work for the kingdom. Begin to work for the interest of the kingdom. That was all Jesus came for. He didn't hide it. He kept likening everything to the kingdom of God. He kept preaching, repenting for the kingdom of God is at hand. That is what is more paramount to God. Kingdom, kingdom. So when you are going for a contract today, one thing you will do that God will really open heaven is, Jesus, give me this job because in getting it, I will advance your kingdom. You have roped God already. Oh, that man that is always letting me down each time I come, he says, tomorrow, next, tomorrow. For the sake of the kingdom, I'm going there. Touch his heart. When you hold God, you rope God with his kingdom, you will see his mighty hand intervene for you. That will be your portion today in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a new day for you. You will make it here on earth and we will rejoice in our mansion in the kingdom. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine over you in Jesus' mighty name. Please don't be confused. You need to hear this message. The message of the kingdom. It's a complete gospel for the complete man. God bless you.